Well, hi everybody, it's 10 o'clock um, and it is time to start. Uh, uh, my, my son Tor says that it in fact is not 10 according to his watch, but according to mine it is. Uh, so thank you uh, for joining us here um, in my, uh, we'll call this our uh, temporary fish dissection lab. Uh, obviously it's also my kitchen, you can see that. Um, but uh, thank you for joining us this morning. We are going to talk a bit about uh, the Lake Whitefish, and uh, that is uh, an important species in Wisconsin, uh, and we're going to talk about the sort of the external morphology, uh, and we're going to cut a fish open and look at what's inside as well. Um, so thank you for joining me. Uh, my name is Dr. Titus Seilheimer. I am a fishery specialist with Wisconsin Sea Grant uh, based here in Manitowoc, uh, Wisconsin on Lake Michigan and I have worked uh, for a number of years with uh, Wisconsin's commercial fishing industry and uh, that is uh, why we're talking uh, Lake Whitefish today. So um, this is a Lake Whitefish uh, and uh, right here, uh, hopefully you can see that. Uh, how's the how's the video look? Can you see the good. fish. Yeah. Okay, so we can see the fish. Um, and so this is the Lake Whitefish. This is uh, historically um, a very important commercial uh, commercial caught fish species. And uh, when I say commercially caught fish species, I'm talking about uh, people who go out, they catch and harvest fish, and then they're able to sell those. So. Uh, when you go to a uh, restaurant, uh, when you order a Friday fish fry, uh, it is likely that uh, those uh, fish are commercially caught uh, many times. If you've seen uh, some of the shows on TV, Deadliest Catch, uh, shows like that, they, that is commercial fishing. Uh, they're catching those fish. Um, commercial fishing is licensed, so here in Wisconsin, uh, the uh, fishery is uh, licensed by the state. Uh, they kind of control uh, how many fish species can be caught, um, what fish species uh, can be harvested, how many of those uh, fish species can be harvested. And so that is, uh, you know, really how that, that fishery is managed uh, with an eye to sustainability. And this, this species right here, the Lake Whitefish, uh, is currently in Lake Michigan portions of Wisconsin waters. Uh, the number one fish species that's commercially harvested in Wisconsin. So uh, over 90% of our commercial harvest is uh, this fish right here. Uh, this uh, Lake Whitefish, um, just some, uh, some basics behind that. So the Whitefish are closely related uh, to the trout and salmon. They're all in this sort of uh, larger family. Uh, one of the uh, distinctive features we would look for is the adipose fin uh, right here. So this kind of fleshy tab and back, that's an adipose fin, and uh, that is, uh, it doesn't really have a purpose that we know of, but it is, uh, it's a, a nice diagnostic feature to use. If we're trying to identify a fish, we look for the adipose fin. If we see an adipose fin, if it's present, uh, we're, we're probably going to be pretty sure in most cases that it's a trout, a salmon, or a whitefish. Uh, there are other species that have those that aren't uh, related to this, uh, the trout and salmon and whitefish, but uh, in general it helps uh, narrow things down. Uh, and so this is a, a very important fish uh, that is caught locally. This fish was caught last week uh, off Two Rivers, Wisconsin in a commercial trawl. Um, and yeah, so that's, uh, that is the, the fish species that we're, we're going to look at today. So. Um, I think what we'll do, we'll start with some of the external morphology and we can, uh, you know, look at uh, how, how the fish is structured um, externally and then we can open it up and uh, take a look at, um, you know, what, what, it, uh, what the organs look like inside and things like that. So uh, you're not in the room, but uh, if you were, you would have, uh, you know, one kind of interesting uh, uh, fact about uh, fresh whitefish is they have kind of a, a cucumbery smell. So uh, uh, Tor agrees mm -hmm. that there is a slight, uh, there's sort of this uh, scent of, uh, of cucumber. It's not a fishy smell, it's a, a cucumbery smell. So we could get a, you know, a good, 
fresh, fresh uh, fish smell there. Um, uh, so we'll start, uh, we can start at the head. Uh, we've got an eye, you know, just like, uh, like many species, uh, uh, whitefish have eyes. Uh, they are a visual species, they use that. Um, uh, important factor here to look at is uh, sort of the shape of the mouth. So uh, what we have with the whitefish is uh, something called a subterminal mouth. So the, uh, you know, you can see the, the snout is sort of overhanging here. And, uh, you know, what that does, and with a lot of fish species, we can actually go and we can look at them. We can look at their body shape, their fin placement. Uh, the shape of their mouths especially, uh, and that can give us clues as to the ecology of that fish. So uh, with a subterminal mouth, uh, that usually indicates that uh, we have a species uh, that is uh, uh, benthic. Uh, benthic means uh, associated with the bottom of the lake. So, uh, you know, a whitefish is going to live most of its time near the bottom. It's feeding on uh, food on the bottom, and that's why that uh, mouth has... Uh, that orientation towards the bottom of the lake. Um, you know, different species, if you think of uh, other common species you might have heard of, uh, things like northern pike or uh, smallmouth, largemouth bass, they have uh, what's called a terminal mouth, and that's really more, uh, you know, just an opening mouth uh, towards the front because they're feeding on things that are in front of them, and that's uh, sort of how they're moving around. Uh, we have the, the nares, nostrils here, so the fish do have a sense of smell, um, you know, very much like we do. Uh, we can move back, we've got the eye there. Uh, and then we also have, this is called the operculum right here. So the operculum, or the gill covering, uh, is the, you know, this is the flap here that covers up the gills. And if we, uh, you know, you can look inside here, and what you'll see is, uh, this red color, and those are the gills. And the gills, of course, are the, uh, you know, like our lungs. Our lungs are used to uh, exchange oxygen from the air into our bodies. And with the, the gills, they're actually very uh, finely, they have lots of capillaries, there's lots of blood throw, flow through the gills, and uh, that blood is uh, able to uh, pick up oxygen from the water. So that dissolved oxygen uh, and that's how they're, they're breathing. So they can, uh, the water can pass through their mouths, over their gills, and, uh, and that's how they're getting oxygen. Uh, we can move back. Uh, first fin here, this is uh, right here. This is called the pectoral fin. So, you know, think about uh, human anatomy. We have uh, pectoral muscles uh, on our chest, and, uh, you know, that's a, something that will help us remember, uh, you know, what... What fins we have, that's the, the pectoral fin uh, right here. Uh, we can move back. Uh, this is the pelvic fin. So again, our pelvis is uh, you know, right near our legs, and the pelvic fin on a fish, uh, in this white fish, is uh, right here. So sort of mid-body. Uh, we move back. We then have the anal fin. So anal fin right near the vent or the anus where, the, uh, you know, where things come out. Uh, that's where the waste waste passes through. Um, we can move back to the, the end. This is the tail, uh, but uh, we biologists uh, refer to this as the caudal fin, the caudal fin or tail fin. Uh, you can look at lots of distinctive features here with the caudal fin. Uh, with the whitefish, you can see it's, uh, it's sort of V-shaped here. There's a, a, you know, a, a fork in that tail, fork tail, but lots of different fish species uh, may or may not have uh, they may or may not have the, uh, the fork tail. It might be uh, some species have flat, flat tails uh, or other things. So uh, that's another factor. Um, again, we'll move forward from the caudal fin. We've got the adipose fin. Uh, so adipose is, uh, you know, just kind of this fleshy, fleshy fin here. It doesn't have any fin rays. Uh, fin rays, which I didn't mention, are the you know, sort of the structure that uh, give these fins structure. Um, and uh, we can move forward to the dorsal fin. That's the fin on the back. Uh, whitefish has a single dorsal fin. There's just one here. Uh, other species, if you think of a, a yellow perch or a, a bass, uh, they would actually have two dorsal fins, a, a spiny dorsal fin with uh, some kind of sharp spines. If you've ever tried to take a 
a perch or a sunfish off a hook uh, that can get kind of uh, spiky on top and then they would have a soft dorsal fin behind that um, so that uh, that really covers kind of the external morphology uh, and then we have you know these these dorsal rays and hopefully um, if we hold this up and uh, you can kind of get a view of those uh, you know hopefully how does that how does that look Lee? good it looks good you can see the uh, so you can see the rays there and they're sort of a, a hard structure um, connected by this membrane and you know they give the, the structure to to those fins uh, and what the fins are doing you've got your fish swimming along uh, you know your tail fin your caudal fin is the, the thrust that uh, moves the fish through the water and then the other fins are helping to you know steer the fish to uh, uh, you know move it at different uh, different depths uh, different areas um, so another another thing we can think about here is scales we know that fish have scales and we can actually uh, grab a knife here and uh, if we uh, scale backwards like this we can actually get a few of those scales to come off and uh, you can you know start to to look at those scales and in general you know what does our fish look like here it has uh, it's very silvery uh, silvery along the sides uh, kind of dark color along the back on the top of the fish um, and if you imagine um, you know the looking at the white fish from the top it's near the bottom that's where it lives and you know this dark dark coloration means that it's going to kind of blend in if you're if you're a predator fish looking down from above uh, but then the the white belly and the silvery sides means if you're underneath you're looking up uh, you might not uh, the the fish might kind of disappear so uh, that is sort of carried through um, through to the the scales here and we'll see how does that look Weave, can you see that not really. not really so uh, it's hard to see but uh, you know generally our our white fish have kind of oblong shaped scales there's some coloration on them um, you can see uh, you know there's sort of a, a pattern along the the side of the fish as well um, and uh, I something else I didn't mention before was the uh, what's called the lateral line and so the lateral line runs along uh, the side of the fish here and it's a, a series of specialized scales uh, with cells that help the fish to, uh, you know, it's, it's almost like an extra sense. It can actually uh, detect very small changes in water pressure, uh, and water pressure underwater can travel very far distances. So uh, the fish can use this lateral line uh, to sort of detect uh, things, uh, and that might be predators, it might be a food source, uh, from far away. So uh, lateral line is another uh, sort of diagnostic uh, factor that we would look, look at here. And so if, if this was a, a fish we didn't know the identification of, uh, we might uh, decide to uh, you know, look at that lateral line. The shape of the lateral line can be a, a good diagnostic feature. Um, the length of the, di the lateral line can be important too. On the whitefish, it starts here by the, the operculum, the gill coverings, and goes all the way back to the tail. But in some species, it might only be, uh, you know, halfway along the body. It might go three quarters of the way. So that's a, another uh, factor that we're going to look at, or we can look at with species. So you know that uh, you know really covers the uh, the coloration, the scales, the fins, um, mouth covering there as well. So I think what we're going to do now, um, any uh, any intriguing questions uh, that have come up. No, no questions so I can, far. I can see them on here, so I'll um, tell you if there's any. Excellent. So uh, I'm just cleaning my hands up a bit, and I think what we're going to do is why don't we try to bring? Uh, you don't need to see me talking anymore. Um, why don't you bring the, the iPad down, Tor, and just put it in front of my phone there? All right. How does that look, uh, you guys? You can unplug it. I'll just hold it here. Oh, you're going to hold it. Okay. Because you can't see the fish. Ah. Nice. All right, so here we are. We are, uh, we've got our, our film crew here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, do have a question? we do have a question. I have a question. What is the question? Why is the fish slimy? 
Why is the fish slimy? That's a great question. Well, uh, so the, the slime it is very slimy, and part of that is uh, fish slime helps to uh, protect that uh, the external body. So, uh, you know, one of the, the things that we like that we'll tell people when you're out fishing, if you catch a fish, you want to release it, you want to really wet your hands before you handle that fish. Because if you remove that, uh, that slimy coating, uh, the, the fish loses that protection. And so that is really a protection of their body, and that's why it's there. Um, you know, in, in, in the water, they wouldn't really notice. You know, we wouldn't really notice that they're uh, sort of uh, like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut along the belly, and we're going to open the fish up uh, to get an idea of uh, what is going on here. So we've got, we've got some scales coming off. We'll scale it a little bit uh, to make that cut a little easier. So I am going to just open this up gently. I don't want to uh, cut too deeply into here. And I'll that over. So we are opening this up. And you can see, uh, you know, this, uh, you got the very thin skin here uh, with a muscle layer along the, the stomach or the belly there. All right. And we're cutting our way. All right, and we're trying to uh, flatten it a bit. A little more stable for you at home. All right, we're cutting through. I gotta get through that pelvic girdle. Uh, so there's some, some bones there, and we'll just open up this cavity here, and yeah, so we can uh, take a look uh, inside. So this is our uh, internal anatomy here. Uh, so starting at the top, and right where my finger is, this is the heart. So the heart is uh, fairly small uh, towards the front of the body. Uh, there is a, a membrane here that separates the uh, cardiac cavity with the abdominal ca cavity there. Um, we can look at uh, sort of this interesting, uh, this is the, the stomach here. So we've got uh, food coming in the mouth that comes down the esophagus, uh, goes into the first portion of the stomach, goes into the, the pyloric portion here, and this is where a lot of that, uh, if you... Uh, think of our anatomy, we've got, you know, really long, short, small intestines uh, where there's lots of surface area to uh, absorb, um, absorb that uh, sort of nutrients uh, from the food we eat. And in the, the fish, they have this, um, if you kind of... But then we can't see it. How's that? How's that? Is that? All right, uh, just a uh, pause here while we reposition. Um, how's that look to her? Looks pretty good. All right, so here is, uh, we can get a, a nice view here. Um, so we have, uh, this is the liver towards the front. Um, liver connected up to the uh, into the mesentery here that's connecting these uh, internal organs together. Uh, and if you're up uh, certain places where whitefish is, you know, really a culturally important food, um, say Bayfield, northern Wisconsin on Lake Superior, uh, if you're lucky, you might be able to try uh, these uh, deep fried whitefish livers. So uh, a little uh, kind of regional. Uh, uh, specialty dish uh, that you can see sometimes. I've uh, got the spleen down here. Um, let's see, we can look for uh, the gallbladder might be visible as well. It's sort of a sac of the bile. So um, I can see it there. So it's sort of on my finger here. It's uh, uh, full, of, uh, full of bile to help with that uh, digestion of the, uh, the food. So food passes through the, the stomach, and really, you know, a lot of what we have here is, is stomach, uh, and then this is the, you know, the, the end of the, 
uh, digestive system goes uh, out of the vent. Um, uh, another sort of interesting, uh, interesting organ that we have right here, you can see this sort of silvery uh, balloon almost. And what this is, uh, this is called the swim bladder. So the swim bladder is actually uh, an air uh, filled sac that's inside some fish species and uh, it's very much like a, a scuba diver so scuba divers use uh, you know vests and weight they use air and weight uh, to keep themselves neutrally buoyant and that's what the whitefish can do with this swim bladder uh, they can uh, inflate it and deflate it as needed to uh, help maintain neutral neutral buoyancy and so uh, neutral buoyancy allows you to stay at a single depth. You're not floating up, you're not sinking down. And uh, many species have swim bladders to uh, be able to maintain uh, you know, that uh, a, a specific depth and just stay where they want to be. So they don't have to uh, fight buoyancy uh, all the time and, and use a bunch of uh, uh, energy. Uh, we also have the gonads here. So uh, this is a male fish. Uh, gonads are very small. These are the testes in a male fish. If this was a female, uh, she would have much larger gonads. So the, the eggs take up a lot of space. And uh, that's sort of another, uh, you know, we can start thinking about the condition of fish, how fat a fish is, how long it is, how long it, uh, or how long it takes to grow. And, you know, for, for male fish, they have to. They they don't have to invest quite as much uh, resources uh, as the female fish do because the eggs uh, eggs take a lot more resources uh, than the the sperm production in these fish. So um, you know that is you know basically what we have uh, inside the fish. Uh, we could also you know sort of pop open these gills a bit more uh, and take a look at those inside. On the inside of the gills, we've got the gill arches. Uh, and then there's the gill rakers, and those can actually are kind of like teeth on the inside uh, that will uh, catch food as it moves through. So if you want to eat smaller things like uh, uh, zooplankton, you know, planktonic food, you can use that. So, um, you know, that is, you know, basic uh, anatomy there. But what I'd also like to do, because uh, if we're talking ecology of the fish, uh, one of the sort of important factors that we can look at is the diet. So um, I'm going to move our whitefish over here and we're going to focus uh, right on this. And so this is the stomach. And so when we want to manage uh, manage a fishery, it's a little, uh, we're a little on the gruesome side over here. But, uh, you know, this stomach, what it has inside it, what the fish has been eating, can be very important. It's, a, a, you know, something we really want to be aware of, we want to uh, understand. And so fish diets, and what I'm doing is I'm just kind of cutting along uh, the stomach here so that we can pop it open and see what this fish has been eating. Ooh. All right. So... Uh, what we have is, uh, you know, it's it's sort of a, a gooey, uh, there's some, some greenish material in here, and what I'm seeing is, uh, you know, ideally I'd have a microscope uh, with me and we could really, uh, you know, pick this apart and dig in. But I think what we're seeing is uh, likely uh, some invertebrate bodies. Uh, the green stuff is uh, mainly going to be uh, some of that benthic algae, so they are a benthic feeder. Uh, they're living down near the, the bottom of the lake and, uh, you know, sort of inadvertently feeding on that benthic matter. Um, but, you know, mainly, I'm guessing they're eating a lot of invertebrates right now. So, uh, you know, here along Lake Michigan, uh, we're, we're in spring now, and what we're, I think, expecting soon as we get these big hatches of midges. And what the midges are, they're small flies. Uh, they look sort of like mosquitoes. They have the same kind of similar body shape, but they don't uh, bite and feed on blood. Uh, but they do have these big clouds of, of midges. And it seems like the whitefish have been eating uh, a lot of midges lately. Uh, they are pretty, uh, pretty abundant on the bottom, and so that is a food source. Um, 
So we do have a question. Uh, how many eggs? We do have quite a few questions. So how many eggs would a, a whitefish lay at a time? Uh, and when do they lay eggs? So those are good questions. Um, so the uh, spawning time is uh, fairly late in the year uh, for whitefish. They actually spawn in the fall, usually in November. And uh, then they will, uh, the eggs will uh, sit on the bottom in these kind of rocky reef areas through the winter and then very early in the spring, uh, you know, April, uh, when the, the temperatures start to warm up, those eggs will hatch. So they get kind of a jump on other species that might spawn in the spring, uh, but they're not spawning until May, uh, and then those eggs hatch after that. So uh, whitefish, uh, things like cisco, uh, will, will feed on those. Um, Numbers-wise, you know, tens of thousands. They, they do kind of put a lot of eggs out there, and uh, generally with fish, uh, the, the survival is pretty low. Um, so uh, another, uh, you know, something we've been doing at Wisconsin Sea Grant uh, is the Eat Wisconsin Fish project and program. And uh, we have a, a website, eatwisconsinfish.org. It's all one word there, .org afterwards. Uh, where you can connect with, uh, you know, producers in Wisconsin, um, you know, uh, and that's both fish farmers and uh, commercially caught uh, fish as well. Uh, recipes, uh, you know, ways to preserve your fish, things like that. Um, uh, another question is, uh, you know, what about, uh, what are some other native fish in the Great Lakes? And uh, we do have a pretty diverse, you know, there's a uh, I think we have 80, 85 or 86 different fish species in Lake Michigan. Um, there's over 100 fish species overall throughout the Great Lakes. Um, some of our, you know, our other native fish species, uh, things like lake trout, walleye, yellow perch. Um, in some places they are commercially caught, other places they aren't. Uh, question, what is the weirdest, weirdest thing that's, uh, that I've ever found in a fish stomach? I haven't seen a lot of weird things. Um, I haven't looked in enough. I think that the whitefish just aren't that, uh, uh, they're not that adventurous, I don't think. Um, some of the larger fish, I know that there's a, Michigan State has a, a project right now looking at uh, sport fish diets, so lake trout, salmon, uh, and they'll find, you know, Coca-Cola wrappers and uh, whole mud puppies. I just saw that uh, this week. So a mud puppy is like a, a very large salamander, um, and uh, you know they had a whole a whole mud puppy in a, a whitefish or a lake trout stomach. Um, microplastics. That is a uh, uh, so you know many of our what about microplastics here? Uh, you know. Uh, a stomach like this, uh, some of uh, microplastics are the very small f uh, fragments of plastic as uh, larger plastic breaks down, uh, as well as uh, the every time you wash things like fleece in the washing machine, uh, if you don't have a filter on your washing machine, those small fibers will, uh, you know, pass through into the the sewage system, into the wastewater treatment plants, and a lot of those are discharged into the lake. So. You know, think very small uh, pieces of plastic, and if you're a fish eating very small things, um, you might uh, pick those up by accident, or you might think that those are uh, a food source that you might want to eat. Um, and uh, they are, uh, I think if we, if we had a microscope and we really dug into this uh, stomach, we might see some microplastics here. Uh, Question is uh, who eats quagga mussels, and that's a, a good question. Um, whitefish uh, actually eat uh, quite a few, um, quite a few quagga mussels. Uh, this uh, this was a fairly small uh, whitefish, and I think in general uh, it did not uh, have any uh, quagga mussels in it. But it's not uncommon to see you know these stomachs full of quagga mussels. So I, I think if uh, sort of a and increasingly important food source, although uh, historically whitefish would have eaten uh, different types of food and it would have been uh, maybe higher quality native food like uh, dipariah, which is a, a benthic invertebrate. Uh, now they've switched to uh, a very abundant uh, quagga mussel diet sometimes, which is abundant but uh, not as good food source. Um, 
let's see. Question: How is whitefish anatomy different on the other Great Lakes? Other different than other Great Lakes fish? Well, I think the you know the anatomy here really reflects the the habitat uh, and the ecology of the fish, and so that is you know something important that we we kind of look at and think about. Um, you know this this sort of body plan and. Um, it doesn't have to all be in there. It's okay. Uh, so the body plan, you know, the mouth shape will all reflect uh, where the, the fish is living and, and what, it's, what it's feeding on. Um, you know, this fish right here, and I forgot to measure it, is uh, uh, about 500 uh, millimeters, and, uh, which would come out to about 19 and a half inches. And, you know, in general, that is... A uh, pretty standard size of the fish we see, I think, on average in two rivers over the years. I've seen, uh, you know, 20 inches, uh, 21 inches is, is about the average size that we see. Um, yes, moving down. So how is uh, morphology different from ocean fish? Well, um, you know, I, I think one of the, the very obvious things, ocean fish, uh, you know, if you think coral reef fish, uh, oftentimes they're very colorful um, and, you know, lots of uh, bright colors. I think generally most of our freshwater fish are a little more, uh, they're, they're not as uh, flashy. Um, and, you know, those are adaptations for, uh, for the, the types of environments that they're in, not as deep, uh, you know, not as bright colors around. Um, and as well, I would say that, uh, you know, Although the Great Lakes are very large, they are smaller uh, than the ocean, so uh, sort of a, a fewer numbers of uh, um, habitats. Uh, the question is, um, what eats whitefish other than us? Well, uh, you know, a, a large-sized whitefish like this would not have a lot of predators. Uh, potentially a very large lake trout could eat them. Um, but really, uh, you know, starting following through their life history, um, I would say, you know, as eggs, there, there would be a lot of smaller fish, things like sculpins, things like crayfish, um, that would be happy to eat the eggs. Uh, and then after the eggs hatch and they're very, the fry stage, you know, they would be uh, a, a good prey fish for a lot of things. And then as juveniles, so as small fish, um, they would also be uh, you know, importance in diets for a lot of different fish species. Um, do, so a question is, uh, do invasive species eat whitefish? Um, I think not necessarily, uh, maybe at the smaller stages so things like, uh, round gobies, uh, might uh, eat some of those eggs. Uh, alewife would, would probably eat, feed on the, the fry and the smaller fish as well. Um, you know, a, a lot of the, the impacts on whitefish from invasive species uh, aren't always direct. Uh, what's happened uh, to the, the Great Lakes food web, have, uh, quagga mussels, zebra mussels came in and really changed the, the sort of structure of the food web from the bottom up. And, and that has been a big impact on species like whitefish. Uh, where, you know, historically the, the fish, the food source they, they really liked and relied on was dipariah, that benthic invertebrate. Uh, and, and, you know, that was a really energy-rich quality food source. And, you know, that has declined as quagga mussels and zebra mussels increase. So, uh, you know, big impacts. And, and really, I think, the, you know, the important message is the uh, most of the Great Lakes uh, ecology has really changed over time, and uh, invasive species have been a big driver of that. Um, I think uh, last question, uh, how have whitefish changed over time and uh, adaptations to climate change, changing habitats uh, are all questions. So, you know, definitely uh, whitefish have changed a lot over time. Uh, you know, the, the populations... If we go back to the 1800s, it was a you know very important food food fish, um, and really was one of the first populations to sort of decline it was, as it was over harvested and impacted by uh, pollution and habitat destruction and other factors. Um, but uh, you know it has recovered in recent years, um, and as a cold water fish species, uh, there are concerns about you know the potential impacts of climate change because. Uh, you know, the, the 
spawning period, the timing of hatching are all, you know, really closely linked to things like temperature. And, you know, as that temperature changes, um, as ice cover declines, uh, you know, that could also impact um, fish species as well. Um, and, okay, I'll take one more question. And, uh, you know, what fish used to be native to the Great Lakes that are gone now? Uh, you know, we do have a few a few native fish species that are totally gone. Uh, the blue pike in uh, Lake Erie that was uh, uh, you know sort of a very similar to a walleye, but sort of a different coloration, slightly different size. That uh, you know basically uh, is is extinct now. Um, uh, there was also a, a closely related group to whitefish uh, called the ciscos, the deep water ciscos. Uh, and there are a few of those that uh, have, you know, declined uh, over time, and, and some of those uh, no longer found in uh, Lake Michigan as well. So, um, you know, that that was a, a pretty big impact. So, uh, you know, just uh, I'll bring this up, and just want to thank everybody for uh, tuning in. I hope you, uh, uh, you know, learned a few things, and... Uh, you know, let's uh, let's do this again sometime. Um, so, thank you. Have a good rest of your day.